Hello, hello, hello to all my ladies, all my sisters in Christ, and beautiful listeners. I want to thank you for being here today. And as usual, I want to come here to encourage you as I encourage myself. I know many of you have been dealing with a lot of struggles. A lot of things in your life. And we're all human. We all face those moments. And we come to a really negative conclusion at times that God is not there that God is not listening to us but it's in through those mo- in those moments that we are going through a difficult test and God is testing our heart <clears throat> to see if we're going to give in or and give up or are we going to stay and stick it out Are we gonna go back to the old ways, the old patterns, our old nature, old sin, or are we going to press, move forward and stay in his presence to receive the blessings? Today I want to speak regarding a Samaritan woman who meets her Messiah. Many of you have heard about the woman and the story regarding the well. I want to speak about that today. As this month of May is ending, today it's um, May 31st. This will be broadcast on Friday. I come here every Friday to bring you encouragement. And so, if you turn with me to the book of John, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat by the well. It was about the sixth hour, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <clears throat> Verse 11, The woman said to him, Sir, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. She is saying this because she's looking at the situation with her physical eyes, not her spiritual eyes. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as well as his sons and his 
livestock? <clears throat> but Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. He's speaking about the water in the natural, you know, the, the, the I'm sorry, in the, in the physical. <clears throat> Verse 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Verse 15, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw and Jesus Jesus said to her go call your husband and come here the woman answered and said I have no husband Jesus said to her you have well said I have no husband for you have a have had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband and that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. <clears throat> Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In this illustration in the Bible regarding the Samaritan woman, you know, she's she's probably, you know, been through a lot of things in her life, a lot of judgment. Many of the women did not want to draw water with her. She was outcast, like she was an outcast, so she would go draw water at different times. <clears throat> Most likely, the women in the area laughed at her, mocked her, said some really rude things about her. Instead of, you know, being women who prayed for her, you know, we don't know if they knew, um, you know, we don't know their situation. We just know that they probably, you know, didn't like her, didn't really want to speak to her. And so... We can just imagine how the Samaritan woman felt. Outcast, neglected, rejected, betrayed. She has this thirst. And we're not only speaking here in the physical, we're talking about spiritually. Not only did she have a thirst for water, but she had been with different men in her life. And Jesus meets her at the well and speaks into her life. He didn't care what the popular demand was or the, the people's uh, votes were against this woman or if they rejected her, neglected her, or spoke against her. Jesus, no matter what her situation was, Jesus wanted to meet with her. He didn't call her and say, if you go here, I will go there. And many Christians 
will not meet brothers and sisters half ways because it may be an inconvenience. But for Jesus, this was not an inconvenience. He went to her. He knew she was going to be there. How many times has, has Jesus met you in your kitchen? Met you when you're in the shower? When you were working on a different project, whether it's work or home. Maybe Jesus met you right there in your bed while you were laying down. Maybe your tear was a prayer. But Jesus was there all along. And sometimes, like this woman, the Samaritan woman, it was hard for her to understand that this was the Messiah, that this was Jesus. Because she was looking at her situation with her physical eyes. Even though she, she was able to see him, she didn't understand that who she came in contact with was the Messiah. And many of you in your distress, in that time of darkness, it's so hard to hear the voice of the Messiah. It is so hard to hear his peaceful, gentle voice because all day we are just operating within the negative voices in our head, all around us or what people are saying about us. Are people speaking negativity, negative about you? Are, are people gossiping about you? Have people rejected you, betrayed you because of your past or because of, of, of a situation that you had no control over? Or are they rejecting you because somebody else spoke evil of you? Many of you are still hanging on to all that hurt. And like in this illustration, the Samaritan woman, you know, she was thirsty. So she goes to Jacob's well and gets water. Jesus meets her there. And he starts giving her a word, a word, a life, you know, knowledge. Just starts speaking to her. He lets her know that she's been in different relationships and the person that she, who she's with now, that is not her husband. So she thinks he's a prophet. Although Jesus, you know, God has given us the gifts of, you know, all the gifts, you know, we have gifts. He's the one that created those gifts. He has given us those gifts. And she's speaking to Jesus. She's speaking to the Messiah. Yes, maybe for the Samaritan woman, her weakness was men. We don't know her situation. Maybe it, it had nothing to do with sexual immorality, even though she was in sexual immorality. Maybe it had to do with her feeling lonely. Maybe it had to be with her just wanting to be loved and, 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 and cared for, um, having that security around her, you know, that security blanket around her. We don't know. But we do know that there was a thirst So Jesus goes, goes to her, meets her right there in her pain and says, he, he's asking her to, for her to give him water. And in those days, 
Jesus being a Jewish, it was prohibited for him to speak to her. But Jesus didn't care. Some of you prohibit yourself from speaking to the Messiah because you feel like you're too dirty to run to your father, to run to God, to run to Jesus and pray. But today he is telling you, I will meet you. I will come to you. I will heal your heart. I long to be with you. I love you. I don't care if anyone loves you. I love you. I made you. I created you. You are my daughter. You are the apple of my eye. When you grab a hold of that, Your life will turn around. You will no longer care what others think of you, if they support you or not, if they speak evil of you. Some of you have been rejected, have been betrayed, spoke against. Maybe your weakness is not a man. Maybe your weakness is something else. Maybe that weakness, you're still hanging on to it. Maybe right now as we speak, it's in your hand right now. What are you holding in your hand right now? Put it down. Throw it away. What is your addiction today? Is it your phone? Do you have someone on your list that reaches out every single time you feel alone? What is it? There is no judgment here because we all have been through temptation. We all have been through hard situations. We're all learning to heal. I'm not going to sit here and try to make life look like it's perfect. It's not. The minute that you call on Jesus, the minute that you choose to turn your life around and serve God, serve Jesus, your life, now you're now you're calling for a, for for war now you're you're asking the enemy to go into war with you it's not an easy thing to do but we know that through Jesus we can do everything because he is the one who gives us the strength the word of God says to trust in the Lord with all your heart not to lean in our own understanding it says that 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 you know in Matthew 17 20 that faith can move mountains. How is your faith today? John chapter 3, verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world. He did not send his son to condemn you, woman. Are you child of God? But that the world through him might be saved. 
he who believes in God in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. You condemned yourself already when you don't believe. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. God sent his son Jesus to shine light in darkness and difficult situations. However, we are the ones who choose to stay in darkness or to choose the light. Do we choose darkness, evil, sin, or do we choose light? Do you want to be blinded by darkness or do you want to see through the light? Let me say it this way. When you allow God to come into your life, situations sometimes don't disappear just because now you're walking with God. However, you can see clear now. You can walk a path in liberty, not wrapped in shackles anymore. When you get weary and tired, you lean on God and his promises. When you thirst, you go to the spring of, li of living water and you thirst no more because a transformation takes place. Temptation happens. It happens to all of us. Just because a person teaches or preaches or goes to church doesn't make them perfect. They're human. They still have temptations. They are still vulnerable. But that's why we are to not lean on our own understanding. We're not supposed to trust in our own heart because the heart can be deceiving. And a lot of people get that wrong because there's so many sayings, memes, posts that people put up there that says, trust in your heart, trust in your heart. No, and then you wonder why we get it wrong. Don't trust in your heart. Don't trust in every single relationship because your heart told you to. Trust in God, lean not on your own understanding. When you allow God to help you, He will reveal many things to you. And when you're waiting, He will give you patience. so that you don't have to jump out and grab your own water. He will give you the living water, the fountain of life that is Him so that you will never thirst again. I hope that this message encouraged you all. You all have a great day.